All right. We're going to inspect today to find out if the bees are bringing in nectar and see what kind of progress they've made in that upper box I added last week. I'm very uh, cautiously optimistic that we're going to find some good things in there today. So uh, stick around and uh, let's get into some bees. <laughs> Okay, so what I'm seeing here initially is what I suspected. The bees have stopped taking the syrup that I've been feeding them. And that means one of two things. Either A, they don't like my syrup, but uh, we've seen in the past they do like my syrup. And uh, the other option here is that they're bringing a nectar from the real world. And when you're bringing a nectar from the real world, you don't want the artificial stuff, you want the good stuff. My stuff's not the good stuff, not by comparison. So um, we'll be yanking this feeder off and uh, the bees will continue bringing in nectar from the real world and uh, we won't have to feed them again probably till the end of the season and maybe not even then. Okay, a little bit of smoke, you know that I'm here, and what we want to see is have they done anything yet with the comb I added a week ago. It's only been a week, and um, that's kind of soon, and maybe I'm jumping the gun just a little bit, but we're going to find out here. Go ahead and yank one of these frames out. They've already propolized it a bit hive tool out here. This frame does not look like they've done anything to it. There are bees on it. You can see that. There are some bees on it and they're trying to do stuff, but they really have not yet made any progress on this frame. That's okay. That's the outside frame. It's the last the outside frames are the last ones I expect to see progress on. Let's take a look at this next one. This next frame is one of those better bee comb frames I added that has the pre-drawn comb on it. And this is the one that had a little bit of damage from when I installed it. And I want to find out if they have healed that damage yet. Let's see if they've done anything. They have probably 50% repaired the parts of the comb that were damaged when I assembled it. They've drawn this comb out farther than it was. They've attached it to the frame. It was just pinned in there with toothpicks, but now it's pinned in there with propolis and beeswax. So they are working on these frames. You can see, not a lot of bees in this particular frame, but you see they've started extending some burr comb off the bottom of it and that's always a good sign they are in the process of working it and repairing it and making it their own making it their own that's exactly what we want ever so gently hello lady it can be such a knee-jerk reaction when a bee lands on you. Just want to snap it away. We grow up doing that. And I caught myself on occasion doing that. Definitely not a good practice. Bees rarely are trying to sting you. They're just investigating. Okay, here's another natural frame. Uh, they've done virtually nothing to it yet. And that's fine. You can see they've been on. There's some propolis, there's some indicators that they've been here. So they're not ignoring it, they just aren't ready for it. Okay. The middle two frames are both that better bee comb 
And I can see right now, just down from the top, that there are a lot of bees in the center section <coughs> working on it. And uh, let's find out just what they are doing. I suspect they are making honey, but who knows? There's even the possibility that the queen may have worked her way up into this middle box, or this upper box. She could potentially be laying eggs in here. Doesn't appear so. It appears that, oh yeah, the bees are using this for honey stores. They have begun to put nectar in the lower portion, mostly on the inside part, not the outside part, but uh, they've also Popalize this wax into the frame the way they would have had they built it themselves in the first place instead of me pressing it in there. Let's see if I can get you a closer look at these girls. You can't really see it too well on camera, but those cells underneath where the cluster is at are full of nectar. Full of nectar. That will become honey. Next frame over is looking equally good from a glance. <coughs> They're starting to make some noises. They know that I'm here. Somebody's in their box. I'm getting just a little bit alarmed. Right there. A little bit more smoke. Put the smoker just a little farther away. It's not burning my eyes while I'm trying to work on this hive. Where was I? One, two, three, four, five. Frame five. I think frame five is going to be a lot like frame four was by the looks of it. Yep, backside. They're just getting started, but they have attached it to the frame on the bottom, not so much at the top yet, that's okay, they'll get there eventually. And on this side, wow, these frames, again, if you look at the shadow, the pattern where the bees are at, all that space in the comb where the bees are is filled with nectar. And. Uh, Maybe you can tell there's a little bit of a color difference the way the sun hits it. It's definitely hard to see on camera. But that's all nectar, and nectar means honey. So, they're in the process of building honey. This is not honey for me. This is honey for them. They're getting going, making sure that they have food for next winter. Okay, no reason to look at the next frame, no reason to look at the next two frames, we are good. I'm not going to pull out any more frames, but what I am going to do, I'm going to take a measurement of that syrup that I gave them a week ago. I know how much I put in there, and I'm taking it away from them. Uh, I believe they stopped drinking it about maybe three days ago. So we're gonna find out just how much is left, and uh, curious to see how much they drank in the uh, five days or so that they were drinking it, just for curiosity's sake. Take a look at this video I made earlier demonstrating how my honey super works. And while you're watching that, I will be deciding what my next uh, plan of action is. Okay, I'd like to give you a quick run through of the honey super which is the box that goes on top of the beehive for the purpose of collecting honey. And in most cases, there really is no difference between a honey super and the brood box. They are literally a box of frames for which the bees can lay eggs, store honey, pollen, whatever they need to do. Uh, the only thing that generally makes a difference between the honey super and the lower brood boxes is something called a queen excluder. Now, this plastic sheet would go on top of the brood boxes and beneath the honey super. 
And what it does is those holes prevent the queen from being able to pass up into the honey super. Therefore, no eggs can be laid in the honey super. She can't get up there. All the worker bees can pass through that just fine for the purposes of storing and making honey. And um, so that's what happens. The queen excluder goes in, the queen can't get up there. Now, the other difference in my case is I'm using something called a flow hive flow super. And in most cases, conventionally, and the way it's been done for ages is that you take the frames of honey once it's finished by the bees and capped you take those frames out you go into a processing room you cut all the caps of wax off that are sealing the honey into the cells and then you stick those frames into a big centrifuge that spins the honey out and uh, the honey runs down with pieces of wax and stuff in it goes through a straining screen to clean all the chunks of stuff out of it and then you get purified honey or filtered honey. And uh, it's a lot of work, it's sticky, it's messy, and it's very invasive to the bees. But it is the way, it's the most efficient way for large operations to do it. In the backyard, you don't really have to have all that equipment and such, especially in the case of me where I'm letting the bees keep most of their honey so that they can survive on it over the winter. Where a commercial operation would take all that honey away from them and then feed them sugar syrup. To survive the winter, um, I want to go a more natural route. I want them to do what they would do in the wild, which is provide themselves with honey and then survive off that honey during the winter. And then I will only have to supplement them with food should there be an imbalance. If something's wrong, they weren't able to make enough honey for themselves because of weather conditions or some other factor. Uh, otherwise, they can survive on their own. Because I'm doing it that way, I'm not going to get tons of honey out of my hive. I only get the surplus honey. After they've completely filled their boxes with their stores, they will climb up into this box and put more honey, in theory. And if I'm lucky this year, it might not be till next year, but if I'm lucky this year, I will actually get honey in this box. What makes this particular box different than the traditional honey super is something called the flow frame. And these frames, let me out of here are not like the frames that you saw me put in the uh, brew box. These are a plastic frame. They're a mechanical frame. These were invented by some guys in Australia and a uh, really fantastic device. A lot of beekeepers disagree on this being a good or a bad thing, but uh, I'm convinced it's good. I've seen plenty of videos over the years showing how well they work and how reliable they are and how they do not harm the bees. And the way this works is a tool, a key, literally goes into a slot, you crank a handle, kind of like turning a valve, and every other wall in the honey cell displaces, and the honey is allowed to flow down the middle of the frame, and literally out of a hole in the front where a tube will be stuck in, and the honey will flow out of the tube and into a jar to be collected. The bees don't really even know that it's happening. You don't disturb them, you don't take the hive apart, you don't pull frames out, you don't cut wax off, you just turn a handle. They don't even realize it's happened. Eventually they realize that the honey is not in the cells anymore. They clean their own wax caps off and reuse that wax, and they go to work refilling that frame with new nectar to make new honey. It's very non-invasive. Another neat feature of this hive, first off, is the collection door where you can look into the ends of all the frames and see how the production is going. At least from one end of the frame, you can see how they're doing, which ones are ready to be harvested, and which ones aren't. It has access to put the tool in, called the flow key, which is this device right here. It just goes into a slot, and you crank the handle, and the honey starts flowing. Um, so that's an observation window, as well as uh, collection, honey collection access door. And uh, in addition to that, what the Flow Super has, I'm trying to put this on from a weird angle, there we go. It also is complete with observation windows. You can actually watch the bees working in their cells and making their honey. And they are safely behind a piece of plexiglass. And there's an observation window on both sides 
with any luck, we'll be putting the Flow Super on and uh, maybe in the coming weeks be able to witness honey being made right there behind that window and then eventually tapped by me and put into, put into a jar. Okay, I've made the decision. I'm going to put my Honey Super on top. And uh, it might be quite a while before we see activity up in that box, but that's fine. One of the objectives to uh, beekeeping is to not open the hive any more than necessary. And uh, as long as I'm in it today, I may as well get this step done and I can leave them be for, oh wow, several weeks before I can peek in there unless I think something is wrong. So I'm gonna go ahead and crack this lid again. See, they've already, just in that little bit of time, since I put the lid back on, they're already up in here starting to get things ready. They don't know this is coming though. So we install the queen excluder. So it sits right on there. And this means the queen cannot go beyond this point. Nothing but worker bees above that screen. And now, the Flow Hive Super. Down there nice and straight. Everything's going to seal up good. Looking good. And just like that, it won't be long before they start inspecting this new upper chamber. Starting with these couple of girls that are on the inside of the lid already. I guess they get to be the first ones to check this out. Climb in there carefully, girls. Don't want to squish you. And <laughs> lastly, what's referred to as the telescopic cover. Carefully lay on there. Make sure it's seated down evenly all the way around. So you don't get bees trapped up inside of it. And just like that, we have installed our flow super. And now, it's interesting, I'm sure it's too soon to see anybody in here. But, it won't be long before we'll see bees inside that window. Adding wax to those cells, then nectar, and converting that nectar into honey, and then capping it. So, as soon as that happens, I'll be providing pictures and video. Thanks for watching, as always. Be safe. Be kind, be happy.